Good afternoon, and welcome to episode 916. I'm going to have to shorthand that. Um, <laughs> topic today is about self-love, and I want to really make a point about self-love today. This has been the thing I've been talking about a lot for the last couple of years, for years now. But I want to speak more about how it is the least egotistical thing you can do for yourself, because a lot of people tie self-love to being egotistical. And I want to break that falsehood and teach you some key things about why self-love works. Hi, Danielle. Nice to see you my broadcast. Um, before I do all that, let me, let me introduce myself and explain why I do these talks, because this might help you. Um, and this is a Facebook Live, by the way, in case you're wondering. My name is Barry Selby. I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. A book for singles and couples, men and women, is a book about relationships, but it doesn't matter if you're single or a couple, it'll help you. And I'm biased. <laughs> I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's what informs my work. And also what started these talks or inspired these talks just about three years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. Today we're episode number 916. And I'll tell you at the end of the broadcast where you can find the replays so you can catch all the previous ones if you, in case you haven't caught any of my other broadcasts. And today the topic is about self-love. And I'm pedantic about this, I'm adamant about this, and I'm constantly reminding you to love yourself more. And I'll explain why. Because you may be going, so what? Um, then again, you might be going, oh, good, thank you. You can, might, I have no control of what you think, <laughs> as you may have guessed. So here's the thing. As I said before, as I said at the top, for many people, self-love is an act of ego, self, excuse me. For many people, people believe that self-love somehow is selfish. So it's ego-based, not self-supportive. And I am absolutely clear that's not the case. This thing about self-love, and it's interesting because our culture has taught us about, you know, when you fall in love with yourself, it's too, it's too much ego. If you, if you love yourself too much, or you're full of yourself, or you're um, self-centered, you're not a nice person. That's kind of the way we've been taught in our culture. And self-love is none of the above. In fact, if anything, self-love reduces that. Because self-love is a skill, a tool, a vehicle, a method to create more humility. So in fact, it's the opposite of egotism, and ego structure, and all that sort of stuff. So I want to make sure that you get this point in in principle because you may have for yourself had a block on loving yourself because you were told it was wrong maybe you were told that you should be caring more about other people than yourself i know i heard that one maybe you're taught that maybe love should be something that is reserved just for relationships and shouldn't be something you do on your own there's a lot of rules out there where self-love is violating those rules because somehow it's wrong to love yourself that the the the, the book of well, see, if there was a book about healthy relationships, there wasn't one when I was growing up. I've read a few since then, and so books have been written, thankfully, including my own. Um, but there was no, like, workbook given to your parents when you were born. It wasn't given to mine. And you, didn't, you weren't born with one either. So the understanding about how love works was really based on what was in the awareness of the people around you. So to learn how to love yourself was, for most people, not something that was given to us. We weren't taught from the get-go that loving yourself was right. And we weren't taught that so loving ourselves was healthy. And all of that needs to change. And that's kind of my pivot point here. Um, when we love ourselves first, when we put ourselves first in our own life, so many things come into alignment. So many things come into clarity. It's like you, it's like, it's like you focus the lens and suddenly the picture gets sharp. When you love yourself first, that happens for your life, for your, um, I want to think about here. Not just for your life, but it's more than that. It's about you. It's about knowing what you're about. When you start to love yourself first, like, tune, like again, like turning the lens to come into focus, I like that analogy, it's kind of, it kind of works. You gain more insight into who you are. It also shows you, if you've been in bad relationships, what you will no longer settle for. One of the things about self-love is it raises your self-esteem, not as a, Ego, egotistical perception. Like I keep talking about that because a lot of people are tying self-love to egotism and I want to separate the two very clearly. When you love yourself first, when you really take care of yourself and appreciate yourself and love yourself first, you'll find that your ego takes second place. And I'll, I'll break it down as an analogy this way because when you look at, when you look at egotism, it's, it basically functions above the neck. Our ego is basically housed in our frontal cortex, in our mind, and it wants to run the show because it thinks it's in charge. It's a mistaken in that approach, but it thinks it's in charge. Whereas self-love and the love aspect starts below the neck. You can say it, well, I love you, because it's very mental in that way. 
or you can feel love from your heart. And when you do love yourself from your heart, give me the mechanics here, you'll discover that who you are is a lot more caring, a lot more compassionate, a lot more worthy. So many things I can talk about this. I mean, self-love is like, it's, it's the door, it's a key to a door that opens up to a, a, a treasure trove of self-supportive practices and thoughts and understandings and appreciations. So I keep highlighting them along the way. In, in, when I was writing about self-love as a, as, a, as a course I was gonna create, I had come up with 20, 27, something like that, different aspects that were benefiting from being in a place of self-love. Every single one of my clients I've, I've taught self-love to as part of their healing process to become more available for a healthy relationship. So just to say it to you here, if you're not loving yourself first, you will not attract a healthy relationship or at least you won't be able to sustain a healthy relationship because the love has to come from within you first. Has to come from within you first. That's why I end up creating the self-love guided meditation that I did, which I sell on my website, and I'll put the link in the comments, you can check it out at the end, because it's a pivot point for everybody's relationships. As soon as we stop, and I mentioned this yesterday, yesterday, day before, about how if you are looking for the other person to love you, <clears throat> excuse me, clear my throat for a second. <clears throat> if you're looking for somebody else to love you first, then you'll either be waiting a long time or you'll feel like you're dependent upon their love to make you feel okay, which is the whole structure of codependency I've talked about many times. It's like you have puppet strings, you give them to your partner and they control them and you end up being out of control because you're not loving yourself first. That's the, that's the Cliff Notes version of the whole thing. So when you do love yourself first, when you're single especially is a good time to do it. As I said before, your self-esteem goes up. So does your, sta so do your standards of what you will allow into your life. This is why I said, when you start loving yourself, your whole life comes into clarity, comes into sharp focus, and you see your life much more vividly from a much healthier place. It means that your friendships will change. They will either up-level or they will leave. And this is a good thing, by the way. So self-love is not just about your romantic relationships. It's also about your family dynamics. I was talking about this before Thanksgiving, that going out for Thanksgiving can be very tra challenging and traumatic for people because there's so much history there. And I said, sometimes when you're loving yourself, and you, excuse me, sometimes when you remember to love yourself, your choice about who stays in your family, meaning who do you visit in your family, who do you spend time with, will change because you realize that certain people are not healthy for you. They're actually toxic for your self-love. So family, dyna family dynamics will shift. Relationships with friends will change. Even jobs will change where you may leave a job that is not supporting you because you feel like you're being abused at work. That happens, I've been there. So my encouragement to you is to use self-love as a, um, what's it going to look for? I won't say magnifying glass, it's made not the right word. But using self-love as a filter, that's a good point, way of doing it. Self-love is a filter for everything in your life. When you love yourself fully, what happens is, as I said, you're, as I said besides your self-esteem increasing, your self-trust, self-confidence, self-reliance, self-acceptance, self-appreciation, all of that increases. As I said, I had 27 of them at one point, and there's more coming. As you recognize your self-support, as you recognize who you are and you value who you are, your choices about who you relate to, who you spend time with, who you enjoy, will change. Because you'll start to realize that people you were around before may have been more toxic than you wanted maybe in less generous than you wanted. Maybe they were taking too much from you. Maybe they weren't accepting enough about you. Maybe they were judging about you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Self-love is a powerful and a transcendent skill set that for most people doesn't even show up on the radar. I'm, I mean, just to be clear, I know for myself, um, hmm, I wasn't good at that for a long time. Loving myself, especially as a man, it's like loving ourselves, no, we don't do that. I would say maybe the men need it more than even the women do. I'm not going to say women don't need it. Let me be clear. But for many men, loving themselves is something that was alien, foreign, not even valid to us. And coming from England, from a very reserved upbringing, even more distant. So I had to go through a lot to get to this point. I, it was actually in my first seminar back in 1984 that I was sitting in a diet process with this guy in a process which was themed called How Do You Hide? And at the end of that, that diet, it's about 10 minutes each, something like that, we answer the questions back and forward. At the end of the practice, there was a moment where to sit still with her eyes open, looking in the other person's eyes, and it was with a man that was looking in the other person's eyes, and this is my first time experiencing this. 
while they played a song. It was a John Denver song, which was very big in the 80s. And I remember in that moment that I fell through like glass ceiling after glass. No, it's not, not glass ceiling is the wrong word. That, that's a whole different uh, metaphor. But falling through layers and layers and layers of self judgment, self recrimination. And I just started falling in love with myself in that moment, in that process, because the other person across from me was doing the same thing. We were mirroring each other in an incredible way. I mean, it was a mirror exercise in a way to see where we were hiding from each other and hiding from ourselves. And when the walls started coming down, so did the fear of loving ourselves. And so the freedom to love ourselves, that was where I first glimpsed and experienced love in a way I never did before. I've, I've highlights through my life from that point forward where I had incredible experiences of how love of myself from me to me, but not anybody else, was transformative. So that's why I'm very adamant about this. That if you haven't practiced self-love, if you haven't learned how to love yourself, if you don't really, if you, well, let me say it this way. If you're carrying judgments against yourself, if you're carrying um, self-hatred, if you're carrying self-doubt, if you're carrying other self-recrimination weapons, then loving yourself is going to be harder. So self-love is a key. And healing those um, self-inflicted wounding weapons, so that's going to be long-winded, is the key to, ha to happiness. Because when you do all of that, then your relationships change. Because again, as I said before, in that codependent model, if you, well, let me say it this way, as I just really put the two together for, in my head. Let me put it out there for you. If you're carrying around self-recrimination, self-doubt, self-judgment, self-blame, self-whatever it is, that is not positive, the relationship, relationships you attract will mirror that to you. If you learn how to love yourself first and you heal those wounds, so you don't carry those wounds anymore, then when you meet people, if you love yourself first, you attract people who mirror that to you as well. So it really is up to you. You can spend the time in judgment, upset, wounding, sadness, all these different things, and struggle through life if you want, or you can be free by loving yourself first. Healing those wounds, because yes, we carry wounds. All of us carry some sort of emotional baggage in life. And if you don't heal the baggage in your single life, your partner's not, it's not your partner's job to do it for you. You've got to heal it if you, want to heal, if you want to have better relationships. That's why as much as I'm about relationships, I'm also about relationship with self. Loving yourself first is your freedom access. It's the path to having what you want. As I said, I'm adamant about this. I've talked about it so many times, but I wanted to speak about it bluntly today so you get it. <laughs> so I'm going to put one link in the comments. Maybe two. One link in the comments for sure, which is my self-love guided meditation, as I mentioned at the beginning, because if you practice this, it's a small investment for a life-changing experience. When you love yourself fully, when you own who you are, when you appreciate what you're about, everything in your life will change. And it can start with, with five minutes a day, excuse me, five minutes twice a day, which is what my guided meditation will give you, and practice that for a month, 30 days your life will be transformed. If you want to end 2019, here's, this is a little marketing pitch, just to be transparent. Everyone's talking about, you know, it's the last month of the decade and change, change 2020. If you want to transform your experience from now till January to have an amazing start to 2020, practice self-love. Don't worry about the marketing stuff. Don't worry about making money. Don't worry about all the other stuff. Love yourself first and watch all your relationships transform, especially the one in the mirror. I think I've ranted enough. <laughs> this, was, this has been brewing for a while. I need to talk about it, so I'm glad I got it out now. So thank you for watching and being by the way. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I'll give you the replay links. Again, link me in the comments. I might put my book in the comments too, because I mentioned at the beginning, and you know, I recommend a book for reading. It's good stuff to have as well. It's also a good Christmas gift, hint, hint. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, tomorrow's going to be early, because I'm going to be out. Of, I'm going to be event at 5 o'clock tomorrow. But normally my broadcasts are at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here, on my right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The replay's got on my business page, which is um, barryselby.author, although they don't always show up there, but you can definitely find most of them on Facebook there. And you can always comment, respond, interact as you want to. If you're doing it live, you can interact with me and I can respond to you directly on the camera. If you want to comment after I, after I finish, you can comment there, I'll respond when I sign off as well. The replays also go to my YouTube channel for backup, and also you can watch them more easily there because I have them all listed from oldest to newest, newest to oldest. Yes, newest to oldest. So if you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can um, subscribe to my channel and watch all my uh, replays in the playlist called Messages from the Masculine. If you hadn't guessed, 
I'm here to help. <laughs> and I'm not from the government. Um, but I am here to help you guide yourself back to yourself, to love yourself, to appreciate yourself, and to be in the best place possible to attract an amazing relationship. If that works for you, reach out to me. Check out the links in the comments. Get my self-love practice. Get my self-love guided meditation now. Get started with it. And watch your life transform. I thank you for watching as always. I appreciate you being with me. And as my constant and continual reminder to you, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.